Hello everyone, this is Brandon the Beard here with another build of fictional characters in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more videos like this and many others. Hey guys, before I begin, I want to thank all of my current subscribers for staying with me. The last few months, last year perhaps, have involved some serious adulting, but now I'm hoping to get life back on track. Hopefully from this point on, new videos will be posted every other Saturday ranging across several different topics. Most of them will be D&D character builds like this video here. Other videos will range from beard care product reviews, beard care grooming tips, as well as other videos from recent life. Last, just last month, I earned a gold medal at the International Chinese Martial Arts Contest here in Orlando, Florida. You'll actually find videos of that from the website of my Tai Chi school, Xinyung Yi Chuan School of Tai Chi and Qigong. Link will be in the description below. But for now, take it away, voice over me. Thanks, live me. For today's build, we're making Worth, the elephant man from beyond the stars, spreading hope and peace across the universe as a member of the Blue Lantern Corps. If you saw one of my earlier videos about different cores within the Green Lantern mythos, you know that they are identified by several key powers. They heal, they purge negative emotions, and they power boost Green Lanterns. However you decide to do your stats for your characters, just keep the following things in mind. Make Wisdom and Dexterity your chief stats for multiclassing. Constitution next, because healers need to stay alive long enough to heal. Charisma after that, your entire core is based around faith, so it makes sense that you are a gifted orator. Intelligence is low, but we're also dumping strength because we just don't really need it for this build. Worth is an elephant man. No, not THE elephant man. An Elephant Man, like the Hindu god Ganesha. Elephant head, man body. Luckily, the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica has the perfect fit for this with Loxodons. You get plus two constitution and plus one to wisdom. Powerful build lets you count as one size larger when determining carrying capacity and how much you can push, drag, or lift. Loxodon Serenity helps you be chill in a pinch, giving you advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. Natural Armor makes your AC 12 plus your Constitution modifier. Wielding a shield still gives you this benefit, but sadly, you can't hold it in your trunk. Speaking of your trunk, it has a reach of 5 feet, can lift a number of pounds equal to 5 times your strength score, and do simple tasks, including an unarmed strike. But it can't hold weapons, or as I mentioned, a shield, or be used to perform somatic components for a spell. Next, Keen Smell gives you advantage on perception, survival, and investigation checks involving smell. Give you that the nose nose. Finally, take the Knight of the Order background for persuasion and nature. We'll begin as a monk. Take history and religion from the monk's skill list. You get unarmed defense, making your AC 10, plus your dexterity and wisdom modifiers. Right now, this is currently a bit better than your natural armor, so I'll let you decide if you want to focus on that or if you want to focus on unarmored defense. Martial Arts lets you use your Dexterity modifier instead of Strength for attacks and damage rolls with a Monk weapon, and your unarmed strikes, Trunk included, deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage. So for this build, we're going to go back to an old format where I tell you the total number of levels per class that this character is going to be using, and then we'll go delve into the levels and skills that each class is going to give later on. In total, we're going to build Worth with 14 levels for Monk and 6 levels of Cleric. You can organize them as you see fit. I prefer not to pigeonhole players into evolving their characters in my suggested direction. Whatever you do, always start with Monk at level 1. We'll begin discussing the Monk levels starting at level 2. Second level Monks get their first key points, usable for cool Monk moves like Flurry of Blows. It gives you two extra unarmed strikes after an attack action. Patient Defense lets you take the dodge and Step of the Wind doubles your jump distance and lets you dash or disengage. All of these things require a bonus action. You also get Unarmored Movement, which increases your speed by 10 feet as long as you aren't wearing armor or using a shield. At third level, you get to deflect missiles, using your reaction to reduce the damage taken from a ranged weapon attack. If the damage is reduced to zero, you can use a key point to throw it back. It is considered a monk weapon, and you're proficient with it. We also pick a monastic tradition, and the Way of Mercy is that perfect blend of offense and defense. 
you get proficiency with insight and medicine, as well as the herbalism kit. Your hands also become hands of healing, letting you spend a key point to heal an ally you touch as an action by one roll of your martial arts die, plus your wisdom modifier. You can then turn that hand around and do damage with the hand of harm. When you hit a creature with an unarmed strike, you can spend a key point to do necrotic damage equal to your martial arts die plus your wisdom modifier. In addition to our first ability score improvement, monks at fourth level get slow fall, reducing fall damage by an amount equal to your monk level times five. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you attack twice on one turn, and stunning strike, letting you stun a creature with your unarmed strikes. Sixth level monks get key empowered strikes, making their unarmed strikes magical. And mercy monks also gain the physician's touch. When you use a hand of healing, you can also end a disease or status effect, blinded, deafened, paralyzed, poisoned, or stunned. When you hand of harm, you can now poison a creature until the end of their next turn. And all of this doesn't cost you a key point. Monks at level 7 learn Evasion, allowing the chance to reduce or eliminate damage from an AoE effect that requires a dexterity saving throw. At level 9, your unarmored movement now lets you move across liquids and vertical surfaces. At level 10, you become immune to disease and poison thanks to purity of body. At level 11, Monks of Mercy can perform the Flurry of Healing and Harm. When you use Flurry of Blows, you can replace one of those two unarmed strikes with a Hand of Healing or a Hand of Harm without spending the key cost. At level 13, Monks can understand all spoken languages thanks to the tongue of the Sun and Moon. Finally, 14th level Monks achieve the Diamond Soul, so now you have proficiency with all saving throws, and you can use a key point to re-roll a saving throw if you fail the first. Moving on now to our cleric levels breakdown. First level clerics choose a divine domain, and since Worth is focused on healing and restoration, we're going to follow the life domain. You get bless and cure wounds as part of your domain spells, and you become a disciple of life. When you use a healing spell of first level or higher, the target gains bonus HP equal to 2 plus the spell's level. At second level, the heals come even faster thanks to your channel divinity. You can now preserve life, which lets you restore an amount of HP equal to five times your cleric level, split across as many allies as you want that are within 30 feet of you. Third level clerics get the spells Lesser Restoration and Spiritual Weapon, perfect for those hard light constructs. Capping off at the sixth level of cleric, Worth is now a blessed healer. So now whenever you cast a healing spell, you also heal yourself an amount equal to 2 plus the spell's level. Our priority for ability score improvements and feats should be on bumping up dexterity and wisdom as much as possible for better AC, not to mention higher DCs for martial arts, and a better attack modifier and better damage rolls. If you do want to grab a feat, I always say take the tough feat and get 40 extra HP. Or get the Fey Touched feat to get plus one to your wisdom, the Misty Step spell, and the spell Detect Good and Evil. You can cast them both without a spell slot, but if you use either one in this way, you have to finish a long rest before doing it again. What did you guys think of this build? Let me know in the comments. I know I didn't go too far into detail regarding cleric spells for his cleric levels, but I'm going to leave that up to you. Do you want him to be focused on healing, buffing, and restoration? Or do you want to offer some more offensive spells, like a standard cleric would? Let me know. Over the next few weeks, I'll hope to be debuting more videos, including Kenshin Himura from Samurai X, Master Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda, and Spear and Fang from Gendy Tartakovsky's Primal. Let me know. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And remember, all will be well. Just keep moving forward.